Hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna be telling you all about termites. What to expect, what you need to know, how to prevent termites, how serious they are. You know, it's a big problem here in Alabama. We're in zone one for termites, which is the worst zone in the country. So you definitely want to check out this episode to have a better understanding of how big of a threat termites are and what you can do about it. Hey guys, today we're gonna be diving in deep on termites and termite issues, what to expect, what you can do about it, and how big of a problem it is. Before I was in the real estate business, I was in the termite business. I was a termite inspector for a local pest control company before I jumped into the real estate market. And before I worked in the pest control industry, I had never seen termites before. I had heard about them. I've lived here in the Southeast my whole life between Alabama, Georgia, and Mississippi. But I had never seen termites, at least that I knew or recognized. So I wanna make this little video for you today to give you kind of like some insider information, like years and years of me going in houses and underneath houses to look for termites. Uh, I wanna share with you my take on it. So guys, let's go ahead and jump on in. But before we do, if you are watching this video, there's a really good chance that you are considering buying real estate or selling real estate in the Tuscaloosa area, maybe even investing in real estate like I do. If that's you and you're getting value from these videos, please go ahead and like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell so that you get notified anytime new content comes out. That helps other people see the content. That lets YouTube know that these videos were valuable, that it wasn't just a waste of your time. So if you could please do that, like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell. All right, so what kind of termites do we have here in uh, West Alabama? So there's all kind of different termites, depending on where you're at in the world, where you're at in our country. But in our part of the country, in West Central Alabama, we have the Eastern Subterranean Termite, okay? Subterranean means underground, all right? So if you've never seen termites before, welcome to the crowd. I never had either until it was my job to go out and, and inspect for them and to find them and know what to look for. I had never seen them before either and I've lived here virtually my whole life in the Southeast. But they live underground and their purpose is to help recycle wood. So you can see like, I'm in the woods behind my house right now and there's like a big log down right there. There's one right there. Uh, all throughout these woods back here, if we, if we walked through these woods back here, we would find all kind of limbs that had fallen down. We would find trees that had fallen over, stumps that were rotted out. And the termites come in, they live underground, they come above ground, they find the wood, they start eating on the wood, and then they carry that wood underground to where the colony is, okay? So they're here, they're everywhere, and when we come in, uh, when I say we, when developers and home builders come in and clear off a lot and build a house on it, the termites don't just go away, all right? They, they were there before we were, and so when we build houses, where their home used to be, we're gonna still have termites in that area, okay? Now, there's a couple different types of termites within the Eastern Subterranean Termite Colony. They are social insects, very similar to ants. You know, ants have like the workers and then they have the, uh, the queens and they have the, the ones that fly and all that kind of stuff. Termites are the same way, Eastern Subterranean Termites. There are worker termites that go out and find the food. They do not have eyes, but what they do is they lay down a chemical trail just like ants do. And the other workers find that trail, follow that trail, 
and they're out there constantly looking around. They're going out in the woods out here. They're going around your house. They're going around your flower beds. They're going around your basement. They're going around your garage. They're all over the place. And they're always looking for food sources. So that's what the workers do. Now, when the workers go above ground to look for food, which they do, they build these mud tubes. All right, they're almost like a, a highway, almost like a, I'm trying to think of a good example of this. Uh, they, they could be mistaken for like dirt dauber nest, wasp nest maybe, but they're these little dirt mud trails that go above ground, zigzag in all kind of different ways. They're not straight lines. But when they go above ground, they travel inside those mud tubes because if they get exposed to the open air, they will dry out and die within a matter of minutes. So again, they live underground. Moisture is a big deal to them. You probably won't really see them above ground, but you might see a mud tube, okay? You might see a mud tube in your garage. If you have a slab foundation, you might see it. A lot of times we see that around garage doors. A lot of time we'll see that where the garage slab meets the house slab. Normally there's two separate slabs and there's a small crack in between the garage foundation and the house foundation. That's a popular place to see them. And then on crawl space homes, the piers, the blocks that are holding the home up, that's typically where we will find those mud tubes. And that's just a sign that there's termites there and that they were looking for food. Now, sometimes they'll build a little small mud tube above ground and they didn't find wood, so they'll go back underground. But if they find wood, then they go tell their friends, they build a bigger mud tube and then it is on. It is a factory. They are eating the wood and they travel down that mud tube, down underground. They take that food, that wood that they've eaten and they regurgitate it sounds kind of nasty but they regurgitate it and then the rest of the colony eats that wood that is their food source so so they're always out there they were already here before we were so when i hear people say stuff like oh man one of our neighbors found termites that, that must that we better do something to protect our house well guess what yeah they found them but they're at your house too i can i can almost guarantee you that they're gonna be on your lot somewhere. They might be eating your mulch and your flower beds. They might be eating something else, cardboard boxes, but they are already there. So don't be scared if you hear about one of your neighbors having a termite issue. They're already here, but you can protect your house from it, okay? So they come above ground to eat. There's also soldier termites that protect the colony. And then there's also reproductive termites that uh, that reproduce and depending on what the colony needs if they need more worker termites then they'll pump out more workers if they need more soldier termites they'll pump out more soldiers there are chemicals that tell them which kind of termites to produce in what quantities so they're actually pretty amazing animals but just to reiterate they they live underground the colony is underground they only come above ground to look for food and once they found food, they will continue eating from that source for a long period of time until something stops them. Now, what can you do to protect your house? All right, that's a great question. There's a couple different ways you can do this. So your homeowner's insurance does not cover termite damage because it's preventable for the most part. So what you can do, you, you can get a termite bond that's really not the best terminology, but that's what most people are used to calling it. But a termite bond is essentially just a termite contract where a pest control company comes out, does a treatment, a preventive treatment to prevent termites from getting into your house. And if there are termites ever in your house, as long as you have continued to renew that contract every month, every quarter, every year, however you have it set up with your termite contract provider, your pest control company that you have a contract with, as long as you're up to date and have continued to renew it, they are supposed to come in and get rid of the infestation and in most cases also repair the damage. Um, but that's something to think about. Not all companies do the repair 
part of it. Some of them will only do the treatment part where they'll say, hey, we're gonna treat your house today. And if at any point down the road you have termites in this house, we'll come back and treat it, but we're not gonna fix the damage. That's not the kind of contract you really wanna go with. You really want the one where they're gonna treat it and they're gonna repair the damage, okay? So we would call that a, a retreat and repair contract. So that's something to think about. Now, the two main ways that you can prevent your house from having termites, the old way used to be that they would actually come out and they would inject a bunch of chemical into the ground around the foundation of your house, which basically put a barrier, a chemical barrier to protect your house. Now, there's a couple problems with doing that. Number one, the termites that die from that were the ones that came in contact with that pesticide, that chemical that's in the ground. So, like I already mentioned, the colony is underground. The only ones that are going like away from the colony are the ones looking for food. So if, if they're out there looking for food and they hit that chemical barrier, it doesn't stop them from going on to, to find wood and start eating wood at your house, but that chemical gets on their skin and those that came in contact with that chemical died so it's not the most effective way but it is a way to do it also because of the regulations in the chemical world today with the the epa and other government agencies the chemicals that are used today to treat your house in that manner don't last very long maybe five years seven years maybe ten years so you're gonna pay a lot of money to get a lot of chemical on an average size house, it's probably 400 to 500 gallons of chemicals goes into the ground around your house. That's a little bit of a frightening fact for a lot of people, but then that chemical wears off over time. So then you have to pay to have it redone every five years, every seven years, or every 10 years. Now, the best way to prevent termites is with a baiting system. The Centricon bait stations that you, maybe you've seen those before, the little, the little round green top things that go into the ground around your house, those are the most effective way to prevent termites in your home. Now inside that bait station is a small piece of wood that has been treated with chemicals that are toxic to termites. They're not toxic to you, they're not toxic to your dog, but they are toxic to uh, to the termites. So there's nothing that attracts them to it. Uh, there's nothing out there that makes them want to come to that station. But but as they are out there looking for food naturally, they're again, they're already doing that naturally. When they're out there naturally looking for food, they run into one of those green bait stations that you've probably seen before. They find that wood. They ring, they ring the dinner bell. Hey, everybody, we found some wood and they start eating that toxic chemical and they take that chemical, they go underground, they regurgitate that food, and now not just the workers who encountered that toxic chemical die, but the whole colony dies off. Um, that's debatable. There's people say that the colony doesn't actually fully go away. Some people say it just it makes that colony so small and so unhealthy that they can't really damage your house very much. That baiting system takes advantage of the fact that termites are social insects, okay? So just like roaches, roaches are social insects. And if you spray, you know, you see roaches in your, uh, in your garage, you see roaches in your kitchen and you spray, it kills the ones that you sprayed. But the problem is it doesn't do anything for that whole nest that might be inside your wall or might be underground or might be out behind your house. So what you really need to do to take care of a social insect like termites is to bait them. Put food out there for them that they're gonna eat and that food ends up killing the colony, okay? So that is the best way to do it and that's what most termite companies have gone with. That's what I personally have at my house, again, I was in the termite industry, uh, did a ton of inspections, saw a lot of houses that had termite issues. That's what I would recommend going with if 
if you can find a termite company that can do that. And if you need some recommendations, feel free to reach out. Now you might be wondering like, how big of a deal is this? Well, I'll tell you from experience, and I didn't track this, so these numbers might not be exact, but I will say from experience, about half the houses that I have gone in as a termite inspector, I can find some sign of either an active termite infestation or a previous infestation. So it's a big deal down here in this part of the country. If you're gonna own a property, we used to tell people this when I was in the, uh, the, the, the termite industry and the pest control industry. If you're gonna live in Alabama, you need to have two things. You need to have a Bible and you need to have a termite bond because they really are a big deal here. Now, when I say that, I didn't see many houses that were like totally devastated, totally destroyed by termites. But I've seen a lot of houses that had minor or moderate damage from termites. And so they can be a big deal. And if they go unchecked for a long period of time, they can be totally devastating. It would take a while, but if you don't know what you're looking for and you don't know how to recognize it, then they could be in your house for a long time and cause a lot of damage before you get somebody out to actually treat them. So my recommendation would be, if you're gonna own a property in Alabama, you need to have a termite company, not only inspect it when you're getting ready to buy it, but actually treat the house and give you one of those retreat and repair contracts where they'll come back out normally on an annual basis. They will do a quick inspection of the house to see if they find any, any new signs of termites. And if they do, then they can treat it right then. So they are required by law to come out and do an annual inspection of your property to make sure that the treatment that they did is working and hopefully they find nothing when they come out. But if they do find something, they would rather fix it when it's a small problem than have to fix it when it's a big problem. So hopefully when they come out to do your inspection every year, hopefully they don't find anything. But I would say roughly half the homes that I've been in, that I've inspected, I can see some sign of either previous or active termite infestation. So if you're gonna own a property down here, you need to have insurance. We have storms, we have tornadoes, we have bad thunderstorms, we have a lot of rain uh, in normal years, but we also have termites. They're here, they're out here in the woods naturally. And so when we build homes and when we start neighborhoods, they don't just go away. So you need to have something to protect your home from termites and having a termite contract with a pest control company would be the best way I could recommend doing it. So I hope today's video was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. And again, you can always reach out to me. You can call me, you can text me, you can email me. You can book a video chat with me. I'm talking to people all the time about buying property in this area, moving to this area, investing in this area and I would love to talk with you to help you do the same. Have a great day.